Hello, this video is entitled Psalms of War, America's Battle Psalm, Psalm 35, its 250-year anniversary. In 1774, Psalm 35 was read and prayed at the First Continental Congress, and 2024 marks its 250-year anniversary. Alarmed by the quickly escalating tyranny and the deteriorating condition of liberty in the colonies, and particularly in Boston, the Continental Congress was called for for representatives to attend from all 13 colonies and to be held in Philadelphia. The day of the first meeting was September 5th, 1774. Thomas Cushing from Massachusetts, a Congregationalist from Boston, recommended that the Congress be opened in prayer and that should be the highest priority. Very quickly, however, Anglicans John Jay from New York and John Rutledge from South Carolina argued against the motion to pray. John Adams described why this was so. We were so divided in religious sentiments that Congress included Anglicans, Congregationalists, Presbyterians, and others. We could not join in the same act of worship it was felt. Sam Adams from Boston and also a Congregationalist with Puritan roots asked for the floor. As he rose, he said, I am no bigot and can hear a prayer from a gentleman of piety and virtue who is at the same time a friend to this country. Adams then moved that Reverend Jacob Duche, an Anglican pastor in Philadelphia, voiced the prayer to open Congress's first session. He had heard that he was such a man. The motion carried. Word was sent to Reverend Duche to join the Continental Congress two days later on the morning of September 7th. At 9 a.m., Psalm 35, the Psalter for September 7th that year, was read by Reverend Jacob Duche. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and buckler, arise, and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, O Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Those gathered in the room knew this psalm had been assigned from heaven to be read that day. The impact on the room was electric. It fit their exact situation that they found themselves in. Several of the 56 representatives kneeled on the floor, and Reverend Duche, filled with the Spirit of God, broke into an extemporaneous prayer. Be thou present, O God of wisdom, and direct the counsels of this honorable assembly. May truth and justice, religion and piety prevail and flourish amongst the people. Shower down on them and the millions they represent such temporal blessings as thou seest expedient for them in this world, and crown them with everlasting glory in the world to come. Note that it's not a common practice for an Anglican to break out into prayer like this. The effect on the prayers, John Adams said, was profound. It filled the bosom of every man present, and in language so elegant and sublime for America and for the Congress. Washington was kneeling there, and Patrick Henry, Randolph Rutledge, Lee, and Jay, and by their side there stood bowed in reverence the Puritan patriots of New England, who at that moment had reason to believe that an armed soldiery was wasting their humble households. It was believed that Boston had been bombarded and destroyed. They prayed fervently for America, for Congress, for the province of Massachusetts Bay, and especially for the town of Boston. And who can realize the emotion with which they turned imploringly to heaven for divine interposition? It was enough, says Mr. Adams, to melt a heart of stone. I saw the tears gush into the eyes of the old, grave Pacific Quakers of Philadelphia. What started this powerful move of God that day? Psalm 35. A sign from heaven for that very day. A sign to the United States for all time. Psalm 35. America's Battle Psalm. Psalm 35. 
to pray again in our time. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. This is a psalm that we still need to be praying today. My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.